How's it going everybody? Today I thought I'd take a look at the Look At Modifier 3D, which is a new node in Godot 4.4. We're going to be looking at how we can make, it, how we can set up an NPC to look at our character. I think this is a really cool feature. It's very, very easy to set up. And so we're going to go over how you can do that right now. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new scene because I don't have an NPC. So I'm going to just create a node 3D. I'm just going to call this like NPC. Um, now I've got a uh, character here that I've got online from Quaternius, who's a really good um, free asset creator. So I'm going to drag this character in and just reset the transforms on this. We want to set the node as editable children so that we can get access to the skeleton. And within this, we want to add the new node, which is the look at modifier 3D. So we look at modifier 3D and we can just add that there. Now, we want it to look at the player, but for our testing and setup, we'll need to add a node 3D so that we can just test out the constraints that we want to put on it. So I'll just da drag this out here. And the look at modifier 3D really only needs two things. It needs a target and it needs a bone to manipulate. So we can assign the target to node 3D and the bone, it's going to depend on your character, but for me, it's going to be the neck. Right, and you can instantly see that the character is now looking down. It really is that simple. Um, depending on your character, you might need to manipulate this a little bit. But for us, because this skeleton has been set up in a really good way, it's very easy. Now, the other options we have is the forward axis. This is going to depend on your skeleton. For us, it's the default Z positive, which is probably going to be the default for a lot of people. But if it doesn't look quite right, you might need to figure out the orientation of the bone and set it there. The primary axis for rotation, that is how the bone is going to rotate first before any other rotation. So this is, um, I think Euler rotations. I'm not hundred percent sure, but you can demonstrate it pretty easily. If you look at how his head turns, now he'll go right around the back because it's rotating on the Y axis first. Now, just a reminder that the Y axis is the left and the right. Look, he even keeps his head still when he's doing that. If you, for example, bring this above his head and then move it behind, you'll see that it rotates out to the left and right. Now, if I change the primary rotation to X, you'll see that the opposite happens, that he now prioritizes rotating his head all the way back. And we could do also underneath and through, right? And if we went left and right, you'll see that the head flies all the way back. Now it's just going to depend on your skeleton, how you need to set this up. For us, it's Y. Uh, a thing to note is they can't be parallel, so that's not going to work. So if you've got your forward axis to Z, you can't choose Z as the primary rotation. Okay. Secondary rotation, um, for the most part, you want that to be true. But for example, if you didn't, now it's only going to rotate on the Y axis. So he'll go left and he'll go around his body, but when we raise it above, he'll only look to the left and right. Uh, this could be good depending on what you're making, but for us, we actually, we do want to have that secondary rotation. Okay, so let's go through some of the other settings. We've got the origin settings. Now, these will come into play at some point because we are going to need to use the offset. Um, if you do need the origin to be a different bone or external node, then this is where you can set it. I'm not hundred percent sure on the situation where that might be necessary for us. We do want it to just be self time-based interpolation. Uh, this is going to come into play in a second when we set up some constraints. Um, but what it'll help is with the angle limitation. So let's have a look at that. We do want angle limitation because if we stick the, uh, the target node behind the character's head, obviously he turns all the way around. Now, Unless you're making a horror game, you probably don't want that to happen. So what we can do is we can use angle limitations. Uh, symmetry is good, obviously, because we can set both to be the same. But if you didn't want the left and right, then you can set each one positive and negative. Uh, we're going to set, obviously, symmetry to be true. Now, you can just reduce this until this starts to make sense. You can see these heads starts to rotate around to a lock position. Now, I think probably that looks okay. I don't think my neck can go much further in that direction, to be honest. And it's going to depend on what you're trying to make. Um, and now you can see that when we go around the back, he just stays there. And once we reach a certain point, it'll flip. Now, this is where the uh, 
time-based interpolation comes into play. I'm going to set that up to be like something like 0.2 and you've got some easing options. So we go left and right and you can see now that he'll just do that at an, at an ease, right? So you can choose something that suits personally if I'm going to set this up, my favorite way to do easing is normally with exponential. And then just depending on what you're looking for, you can choose like an ease type. I think out probably makes the most sense. If you think about like someone, how someone moves their head, they might start quickly, but they'll slow down once they get to the position that they're in. And so that looks pretty good. Maybe a little bit too quick. Maybe we can increase this to 0.5 seconds. Okay. You can just play around that until you're happy with something. And then we can set the same for the up and down, right? So for the most part, it's pretty okay because of the way that the uh, um, primary rotation is set up. However, it is still quite far back. Now, I don't know about you guys, but that one is a pretty tough uh, bend for me to make. So I think we should probably reduce the angle. Now, it might be a little bit higher something like that. It really just depends on what you're going for. Maybe 90 is a bit better. Obviously you can see it clipping from the mesh, um, but you know, that's just a matter of the kind of mesh you're using. And so now you can sort of have him point his head in a, in a way that looks reasonable. And I'm assuming down as well. We can always test that because that might be more of an issue, but that looks pretty good to be honest. He's not clipping too far into his head. It all looks pretty normal. I'm pretty sure I can make that movement. I've done that yoga many times. All right. So now that we're happy with the movement, we can start to set up how we can make this look at the player. All right. So what we need to do is a way to have detection of the player, which is pretty straightforward. We'll create an area 3D and we'll add a collision shape. Um, I'm going to make mine a cylinder, but obviously it can be anything you want. I'm just going to raise this up so it's in with the, within the character. You might want to have a little bit of upwards detection as well. So you just raise that up and then just bring that out so that it, it feels right for you. Okay. And we'll just save this scene. Okay. So we're going to need a script to control all this. So I had a script to the lookout modifier. It can obviously be anything, right? So I'm just going to do the script on the lookout modifier because it's simpler. All right, so let's just make that a little bit wider. Okay, now that we've got the script, we can connect the signal from the area 2D. Now we do need to pay attention to the collision layers. Uh, it's gonna depend on your game, but my player is set up on layer two. So this area needs to be masked to layer two. All right, and now we can connect the signal. So we want uh, body entered and we're connected to that lookout modifier script. Obviously this is very self-contained. You might have something more complicated if you're making an actual game. Uh, and we'll click on that again and we'll connect both of those signals up. All right. So now that we have that, we really just need to set the target node, right? So target node, uh, it can just be body and it does need to be a path. So rather than just the node itself, we can go get path and we'll set active to true. And in the exited, we really just need to do the re reverse. So we can say target node equals blank and active equals false. Uh, it really could just be one or the other, but I think it's better just to clear the target node path just in case something else gets activated. Okay, so now that we've done that, theoretically things should be good to go. Um, so we can jump back into the 3D and in the world we have a player, but we need to add our NPC. So I'll add the NPC here. We'll just stick him over in the corner there and we'll run the project. Now this is Godot 4.4. So you can see that the project runs inside the editor, which is really fun. Okay. So we'll walk over to this guy and you can see that he starts looking at us straight away. And when we walk away, he stops looking at us. So I'll approach from the side. Uh, you can see he's kind of looking at his feet, but that's because the origin of this character is probably on the floor or around the groin area. I'm not too sure. Um, so yeah, but you can see it working perfectly well. So that's great. That's a really good start. Uh, but there's a couple of things we can address to make this look a little bit nicer. The first thing is that I think the snappiness of the way that the character looks at the player. So if we go back to the NPC, we can set a delay on the influence. So if we create a look delay variable, uh, we'll make it a float and we'll set it equal to something like 0.2. And what we can do is here, we can 
create a tween. So we can go get tree dot create tween. Uh, and we want to tween a property, which uh, it will be on itself. And we want to tween the influence. The final value, uh, since we're setting it to true, will be one and the duration will be the look delay. Okay. And then for the exit, we'll need to do something a little bit different. We'll create a function called end look at target, something like that. It returns void. And what we can do is essentially the same thing. So we can go target node equals empty active equals false. And in the area 3D, we can create a tween as well. So we can go get tree dot create tween and we want to tween property and it'll be the same thing self influence and it, instead it's going to zero and it'll be look delay but what we also want to do is connect the signal finished and it will connect it to that callable and look at target okay and we'll just remove those brackets at the end there and it looks like I forgot to do the equal sign there. Okay, so now we can run that again. Okay, so I'll come from the side here and you can see that he goes back to looking straight ahead uh, much less snappily. Okay, so that's good. What about the fact that he's looking at our feet? Well, there's two ways that I've thought about how you can deal with that. The first one being is just adjusting the offset. So it's gonna depend on your project, what you need and the different variables around that. But if I go to remote and look at the MPC and we look at the lookout modifier, there is, let's just make this a little bit bigger. There is an offset. So we can just increase this or rather de decrease this until it's somewhere that makes sense for our game. Um, so let's just try to get out of here. I think 1.3, negative 1.3 looks good. And you can just have that set. And so that will always look right, which is pretty good to be honest. Now there is an alternative to this, which would be adding a variable to our player to pass off to the lookout modifier. I've had mixed results with this in testing, so but I'll show you anyway. What we can do is we can add a, um, a bone attachment and we will add a node 3D to that, right? Node 3D. And we'll just call this uh, head target. And what we need to do with the bone attachment is just set it to be using the external skeleton, select the skeleton of the player. Uh, the bone we want to send out, I, I think it doesn't necessarily need to be the neck or the head because that's a little bit higher than you'd expect. So I'm going to go with spine. Um, actually, you know what? I might go with neck just to show you guys. And then uh, that's pretty much it for that. So, and then in the player script, what we can do is just um, drag that variable in so that we have it there. This obviously takes away the modularity, but it's just an example of what you can do. Um, so you can go back to the lookout modifier and instead of body gut dot get path, you can go body dot head target dot get path. Uh, obviously this only works if the only thing your area can detect is your player. Obviously you're going to get an error if you do anything else. Um, so we can set that there. And then obviously we need to remove the uh, offset, which is because that was set in the inspector for the remote. I guess it didn't get set permanently. Um, so then we can go to that and you can see now that he looks at it, but what you can also see is that whenever I move, because the head is like bobbing around, uh, especially in close proximity, he'll move his head. So I, I don't know about that if it's a good choice, but I, it's something that you could do if you had, um, potentially a node. Uh, that didn't move around so much when you were walking, then it could work. Or some other solution where you could do easing on the actual thing that sits on your player. Um, but yeah, that is how you set up a look at modifier 3D. Uh, let me know if there's anything else that you want me to cover. Um, other than that, guys, um, thanks so much for watching. 
thanks to the Patreons for supporting this. Obviously, Patreons get access to early videos. Uh, any of the courses that I've made, we've got a big one for the third person shooter that you're looking at here. We're almost done with that. The first part's already available on Patreon. So if you want to support the channel and you want to get access to a course early, then that is the thing to do. Uh, you can also join the channel membership as well. Uh, other than that, guys, like, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I'll see you in the next one.